Hello, in this video, I am going to show you how to use the ACX Check plugin to check your RMS levels every single time. I'm also going to show you how to install it. That seems to be a big issue too. My name is Susan Fouché. I am with Voices for Learning, where we help you grow as a voice actor. I made a video exactly like this about a year ago in April of 2021. It's now May of 2022. So it's time for a new video because some things have changed in Audacity and in the uh, Nyquist plugin, the actual website that you go to to download the plugin. So, back by popular demand, how to install the ACX Check plugin into Audacity, how to use it, and what everything means. Here we go. So, in the description, you are going to click on a link that says wiki.audacityteam.org slash wiki slash audiobook underscore mastering. Go ahead and click on that link. And that will take you to this web page right there. And again, that link is in my description. So this is where you go to actually download the plugin. It's so easy. It's so painless. Don't worry about it. When my kids were little, they had me download all this like weird stuff in Minecraft. And it like just I hated it. It was so stressful. This, I promise you, is not stressful. This is easier than downloading all the little extra things that you had to download for your kids' Minecraft games. So in um, the wiki.audacityteam.org, what you're going to do is just go right to the middle of the page. Over on the left-hand side, you're going to see Get and Install ACX-Check. Just go ahead and click on that, and it's going to move you to a new page, and you are going to click on the Download link up here in the upper left hand corner. It's acx-check.ny. NY stands for Nyquist, which is just the um, kind of like program that we use in Audacity to get the plugins to actually talk to Audacity. So you're just going to click on the link download next to that. And I am using Google Chrome. You may be using a different browser. In my browser, my downloads come to the bottom of the page. So um, just check where your downloads are. All I'm going to do is just look in the folder, look in my downloads folder, and there it is, acx-check.ny. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to click on anything. Don't do anything just yet. We're just making sure that it actually is there, which it is. The next step that I want you to do, you can minimize your downloads folder, or you can even just close it. Um, the next thing I want you to do is go ahead and open up Audacity. And what we're going to do is install this plugin into Audacity. It's so easy. It's so painless. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Go ahead on into Audacity. And I've actually already got like a little recording in Audacity ready to go to check it. So uh, what we're going to do is install the plugin first. To do that, go to your Tools menu. Up here at the top, Tools, and then you're going to go down to Nyquist Plugin Installer down towards the bottom. Just go ahead and click on that. And then it's going to ask you to select the files to install. So you're going to click on your Browse button over here on the right. Click on the Browse button. And it should pop up into your Downloads folder. If it doesn't go into your Downloads folder, that's okay. Just go ahead and click on this PC, or if you're on a Mac, I don't even know what you click on if you're on a Mac. I don't know how those things work. But if you're on a PC, go to just click on this PC, and then you can go into your Downloads folder if you don't see it right away. And in your Downloads folder, you may have more stuff than me. I just deleted everything that was in my Downloads folder, so I only have the acx-check.ny. Just click on that and click on Open. Then what you're going to see is the little pop-up window for the Nyquist plugin installer. Now, mine looks a little bit different because I actually was practicing how to do this before I put my camera on record. So yours probably looks like this. 
where it says, you know, select files to install, acx-check.ny, and then allow overriding. Yours probably says disallow. We want it to allow overriding. So check that down arrow, click on that down arrow, and just click on allow. And that's it. Once you've got the right files to install, acx-check.ny, and it is allowing the overriding, go ahead and click on OK. And success! Yes, 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 yes. This is so much easier than the whole Minecraft drama. I don't know if you ever had to do that. Oh my gosh, it was oh, so stressful. OK, click on OK. And now we can go ahead and enable this plugin. So this is a new step. Um, this is a new step. I actually, I upgraded my computer uh, about five months ago, reinstalled everything. And so I realized that there's actually another step involved in this whole process of uh, this ACX uh, plugin, ACX check plugin. So what you're going to do to actually use it and to enable it is go to the analyze menu up here at the top, analyze, and then you're going to go down to add, remove plugins up here at the top. Now, you'll notice that the ACX check up here at the very, very top, it's alphabetized. So you'll see it says the state is disabled. What we want to do is enable it. So you've probably figured out how to do that already. Just click the ACX check. Just make sure it's selected. It's in blue. Click on Enable, the little button down there at the bottom above OK. Click on Enable, and it's enabled. And then just go ahead and click on OK. And then you can use the ACX Check plugin. To use it, just go to Analyze. And oh my gosh, there it is. But hang on a second. Before you click on ACX Check, make sure that your audio is actually selected. So you can either like highlight a, a section of it, or you can just click on um, to the left, whatever that is called thing, <laughs> the track <laughs> to select it all. And then go to analyze again up at the top, down to ACX check. Boom. And there is the ACX check. What it's checking, let me explain what all these numbers mean. Well, hang on a second. If you already know what these numbers mean, awesome, great, thanks, see you later. But before you go, um, check out in the comments. I've got a really, really, really great uh, offer for a ACX online course that you can do at your own pace. If you're having trouble booking audiobooks, winning auditions, um, if you're not really sure what you're doing with ACX, this course, the ACX course, is so, so, so powerful and so valuable and so good. Be sure and check it out. Um, it was done by my friend Anthony Pika. He is amazing. He has just a great way of teaching things. And um, check that out. I think you'll enjoy it if you purchase it. It's so affordable and so worth it. All right. So for those of you who are staying because you want to know what these numbers mean, thank you very much. Okay. Here's what these numbers mean. So the main things that we want to look at, first of all, the peak level, negative 3.30 decibels. It passed. If it doesn't pass, it's going to say fail. You didn't pass. Um, so the peak levels need to be on ACX. They need to be at negative 3 or less. So remember, we're dealing in negative numbers. So like a negative 4 is less than a negative three. So it needs to be less than a negative three. So if you're at a negative two or a negative one or a zero, honey, you're not going to pass because the negative numbers, that means it's loud. It's too loud. Most people listen to audiobooks using earbuds. If the peak levels are greater than negative three, honey, you're going to blow your listeners eardrums out. So we need to be kind to our listeners eardrums. The peak levels need to be at a negative three. That's what human beings can can tolerate. So um, negative peak, peak level at negative three. That's a pass. RMS levels. Your RMS level is just uh, root mean square. It just basically means like when we take like the mean, like the average of all of the all of the volume levels, the average, the mean needs to be about negative 20. 
that's what human beings, again, can tolerate. If it's too loud, again, you're going to blow their eardrums out. If it's too soft, they can't hear it. So the RMS levels need to be between negative 18 on the high end and negative 23 on the low end. So somewhere in the middle. So negative 20 is really like the perfect RMS level. Mine for this one is at 19, negative 19.19. That's fine. That that works. I'm not going to blow my listeners' eardrums out and they're going to be able to hear it. We are good to go. So that's what that means. Those are the numbers that you need. The noise floor level. A lot of people have trouble with the noise floor level. Noise floor needs to be at negative 60 or less. And the noise floor is just basically your room tone. It's it's the noise that your room naturally emanates when we are just holding our breath and not doing anything like this. That's the room tone. And that's the noise floor. And what they're saying is like, in between when you're talking, in between when you're recording, what is that noise? What What is that? And if it's too loud because there's a kind of noise or a kind of noise, that's going to be annoying to the listener. And ACX is saying, sweetheart, your noise floor is too noisy. Fix it. And there are a ton of YouTube videos out there about how to fix this using this great handy dandy program called Isotope RX. Oh my gosh, you can buy it for like 30 bucks, $30. And it will take out the noise floor level. It is such a wonderful investment. Isotope RX. Learn how to use it if you're having issues with the noise floor. So if your noise floor is at negative 50, that's too loud. That's not going to work. The noise floor needs to be at negative 60 or less. Mine is at negative 90. And it's actually giving me a warning saying it's too low. The dead silence sounds unnatural. Well, ACX check, I beg to differ with you. My audio sounds good. So negative 90, I think, is actually good for me. Um, negative 60 is about where they want it at, you know, but... It, it, it will pass. I mean, at negative 90, it will pass. So I am not even going to worry about it. Again, if you're having trouble with your noise floor level, if it's at like negative 40, negative 50, negative 55, anything louder than negative 60, invest in Isotope RX. I promise you, $30 for $30. You can fix all this noise floor drama, be done with it, submit your files to ACX and make some money. So that's what these levels mean. Peak level, RMS level, noise floor level. I hope this is helpful for you. I hope this is helpful and empowers you to just know kind of like a little bit more what you're doing um, on the audio engineering side of this crazy thing we call voice acting and narrating audiobooks. There's a lot to it, I understand, and it can drive you crazy. So hopefully this is like lessening your stress level quite a bit. So have a great day. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you found it valuable and you want to see more, subscribe to my channel for crying out loud. I'm a growing channel. I could use your support. Have a great day. Can't wait to see you next time. Bye.